Now the global hospitality business has been in a mixed grain of sort. African economies have been harmed by the consequences of COVID-19 induced economic restrictions in the hospitality industry, leading to what economists have referred to as economic scarring. Despite the challenges operators in the Nigerian hospitality sector are witnessing uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, analysts say the best time for any descending investor to inject funds in the sector is now, adding that COVID-19 should not be a barrier to investment. Hotels that will remain relevant in the future will need to adapt to their business operations in companionship with new trends and emerging hydraulics of the industry. Now the hospitality industry is indeed our focus for today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Now, the Finance Bill 2021, petrol import as well as 5G rollouts made headlines in the business Nigeria. Here are the highlights. The Finance Bill 2021 has made it mandatory for commercial banks to demand tax identification number from individuals seeking to open an account with them. The bill also empowers banks to demand TIN from existing customers if they wish to continue to operate their accounts. The bill also makes it mandatory for non-resident firms such as Google and Twitter to pay taxes to the federal government of Nigeria. The leader of the Senate, Yahya Abdullah, he stated this on Wednesday in his lead debate on the bill sent to the National Assembly by President Mohamed Buhari. The cost of premium motor spirit, also known as petrol, imported into Nigeria from January to September this year surged by 55.56% to 2.52 trillion naira from 1.62 trillion naira spent in the same period of 2020. The development came amid the federal government's plan to remove subsidy from petrol by February next year. Already, oil marketers have begun plans to resume importation of the PMS as soon as the government deregulates the downstream sector of the petroleum sector in the first quarter of 2022. Petrol's 2.52 trillion naira input bill for the first nine months of this year is 47.37% and 25.37% higher than what the amount the country spent on PMS import in the whole of 2019 and 2020 respectively. Data obtained from the National Bureau of Statistics show. The House of Representatives Committee on Public Accounts has resolved to investigate the utilization of two billion naira paid to the National Institute of Pharmaceutical Research and Development for intervention on COVID-19 from the service-wide vote account by the federal government. Chairman of the committee, Oluwale K called for the probe when the acting director of finance and accounts of the institute, Dazam Alivai, appeared before the panel to defend spending of release made through the SWV from 2013 to 2020. Levi could not give satisfactory explanation to all questions raised by the members of the committee on how the intervention fund was disbursed, which prompted a member to call for probe. The Nigeria Communications Commission says Nigeria's 5G plan will allow efficient allocation of spectrum for deployment and ensure its effective deployment in major urban cities by 2025. The commission also disclosed that much-anticipated mock auction of the 5G spectrum for qualified telecommunication companies would hold on Friday. In preparation for the main auction scheduled for Monday, December 13, 2021, these were disclosed by the Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, NCC Professor Omar Danbata, at a capacity building workshop theme, 5G deployment and the next level of Nigeria's development, organized by the Commission in Kano on Tuesday.
Well, welcome back. Those were the stories that made headlines in the world of business for this week. Now, for hoteliers who are interested in maintaining and attracting new customers, they would need to emphasize safety and hygiene in the operations. Furthermore, they should have sufficient knowledge of trends in which customers would be interested to guarantee their comfort in the hotel's environment. Well, joining us on the show this time around to look at the future of the hospitality industry in Nigeria is Ulo Mokoro. She is the CEO of Lumsi Suites. Well, many thanks for joining us on the Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, Uloba. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, same here. Let's talk about uh, the sector, you know, COVID-19. You know, 2020, everyone was uh, a bit scared and uh, the, whole, the industry was actually one of the most affected, you know, for months. Uh, no entertainment, no going out and uh, no money. So how would you say this sector has been thriving since then? So I think for... 2020, a lot of organizations had to learn how to adapt. So if you watch, hospitality is very high contact. So mm. it means people move around. They, once they continue to move around, they find places to stay. And, you know, people have to attend to them. So when COVID-19 came, the hospitality sector was one of the worst hit after the travel industry. Mm. Reason being that there were no more travels. And then you will also know that most hotels don't always rely on their lodging alone. A lot of them rely on their hall spaces, entertainment, events, you know, and then suddenly there were no events. Mm. Even when, you know, the, the lockdown was lifted gradually, you will notice that there was a, a, a restriction on number of people who could gather At the time. from 20 to 50. That meant that if you were big on your conference spaces or your event spaces, there was no money. Mm. So what were we going to do? You know, so it, we were hard hit, I will tell you. But then you will also know that, I mean, necessity is the mother of invention. invention yeah. So people had to learn to adapt. So it looks like COVID isn't going anywhere. No, it's not. When at first it was like, hurry, okay, anyway. let's wait it out. And everybody was waiting yeah. it out. But now we've seen that lockdowns don't work. Mm -hmm. What organizations should be thinking about is how do we survive regardless of COVID because while we're waiting it out and then we saw the Delta variant and now we're looking at Omicron, mm -hmm. you know, so the best, the people who will stay afloat are the people who are learning to move with the times. Okay. The people who are swimming, the people who are swimming regardless. If you look at how organizations used to hold meetings before schools, everybody was face to face. Now it's very common for someone to invite you for a meeting and it's online mm -hmm. and it's fine, you know, so, but how does hospitality, where you have to come in, book your hotel and all that, how are you going to do, are you going to do online hotel? <laughs> I wonder <laughs> how, how, how that would work. Now, let me tell you how that works. Okay. If you remember um, chains like the Airbnbs and all mm -hmm. the other people, if you notice the whole shotlet thing came up and became very prominent during COVID. Okay. Because you were now having um, hotels that had no contact. You only called someone on the phone and then you had a cleaner who would come in a day or two and clean, but mm. you were basically on your own. Okay. So that started, you know, all that started, even hotels, big hotel chains started doing service apartments by the side somewhat, mm. you know, just to be sure. But now um, hotels are getting a bit, I think we're getting there right now in developed climes. We're having things like contactless check-in, mm. you know, things like that where you don't even have to, you may see someone at the reception, but you don't have to talk to the person. Okay, but, but um, has Nigeria actually moved uh, towards that trend? Are we doing the new norm right now? Um, funny enough, a lot, of all this, uh, a lot of all these solutions are very, um, it, most of the larger hotel chains are starting to access them gradually, mm. but they're not that expensive. So why are we not exploring really? it? So I think a lot of problems that we face in our sector is people being able to embrace change as quickly as they should. Okay. Because even for us, that's part of our plans for 2022. We're already in talks with people who will do that for us. Okay. Where, I mean, guests don't have to. While you're in your house, you can book your hotel online, which you're already doing, which everybody's okay. already doing. Mm. But then after booking online, can't you check in online? Mm. All you need is your name your information, scan your ID or whatever, and send to them so that when you arrive at the hotel, you don't need to stand in line and talk to anybody. Mm. Once you say your name, your key is available to you. In fact, some people give you a barcode on okay. your phone 
oh, so wow. that your but yes, so that your barcode once you get to the Just door your access. Yes, it's you know the barcode you can scan it on the door of the hotel or mm. on the door of your hotel room, and the room opens. Oh wow! So everything you need to order, rather than you know calling room service every now and mm. then, what do you have? What do you you can do everything from the hotel app. Okay. On your phone before you arrive. So invariably, right now, uh, we're going to see uh, less contact and services in the hotel business uh, going forward. Exactly. That's, okay. That's and it does not really require uh, so much uh, capital outlay for that to get in. It's not. It's not. If you look at the manpower involved, manpower, man hours, mm. and the fact that, I mean, if you look at the hotel industry in Nigeria, you will know that we actually need standardization. Yeah, I was going to come, come to that. You know, yeah. because I, it's like, if you're looking at the money involved, it's really not a lot, I can mm. assure you. It's not. Oh, really? but the, Yeah, no, it's not. Okay. But the thing is, you know, a lot of operators are still within the space where, or the age range where embracing technology is challenging. I get it's just yeah. like when a lot of organizations went online, you know, started having Zoom meetings. I know how it was. It was challenging at first for exactly. most people. Exactly, yeah. especially for people above 40. Mm -hmm. You know, having to log in online, having to know when to unmute and mute yourself. You know, So a lot of them are coming to that point where they haven't even finished understanding social media. And then you're telling them to take their entire customer service so, so, online. Mm. You know, so. All right. Now, now, I'm glad you mentioned standardization. You yes. know, how, what is... What obtained here in Nigeria? Is it like uh, before you get into the hospitality industry, you need to get into some sort of uh, uh, a group, an organization, an association? Is it regulated in Nigeria? What obtained here? Or is it just an all-commerce affair? So it's regulated, meaning that you can't have your hotel license except you are registered with legal state government, of course. Okay. And then before you can register your company as a full service hospitality firm, before the CAC even you know, starts looking at your papers, there are places you have to have gone to, the NFIU and all that. Mm. Because hotels are considered as one of the places where people can bring in a large sums of money. So, of course, the EFCC, the NFIU is a branch of EFCC. So they have to at least know about you and have your data. Mm. So all those things, not that is not regulated, but because after that, you know, after you get your license and pretty much that, it looks mm. like everybody is pretty much on their own and okay. people can't try, tend to, you know, operate their business the way they understand. So there's no sort of sanity per se? So apart from the large hotel chains, which okay. all of us know, which mm. I mean, for most of them, if you were a, in a particular, you know, hotel, belonging to a particular chain in a particular town and let's say i'm in lagos and i'm in that kind of you know hotel mm. and i was to travel to abuja and i booked the same kind of hotel i know exactly what to expect what to expect exactly all right but we don't have that around here so here you know people mop up capital all right and you know i'm going to set up a hotel and they start thinking what are those things i see in other hotels okay i, I put, need to put, I put ac i put fridge i put security i put mm. all that and then at the end of the day we don't know whether you're five star Four star, three or star, no star at all. Or no star. <laughs> all right, okay, let's still talk about some of the uh, challenges uh, that uh, you know hoteliers and the sector uh, uh, you know face uh, in Nigeria. You know, most times people complain about infrastructure, electricity, which is like the bane of most industries. What are your peculiar challenges ah, in this sector? You see that electric city. <laughs> My goodness, you know, as early as as recent as May of this year, yes. we used to get diesel for about 240 per liter. Mm. Now we're on 320. Oh, what margin of over six. And it looks like, you know, the way it's been going, it's like when you finish, you know, every hotel has how they make their orders. Yes. So when you get your first order and you're running out and you call your dealers, yes. there's always a markup. Oh, wow. It's been going like that consistently. So meaning that what I bought in May wasn't what I bought in June, wasn't what I bought in July. Definitely mm. what I, not what I bought. So invariably, it will actually affect, uh, you know, the bottom line. Exactly. So how do you now, you know, live above water? Exactly. Because the thing is, um, there's a lot of competition, right? So mm. you can't just wake up and start jacking up your prices because Nigerians are very price sensitive. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah, when it I comes agree. to... I am. Very, <laughs> very, very price sensitive. Yeah. And, you know, they have, they already have a budget about how much they expect from Mm. any kind of hotel that they're going to and if you wake up overnight and jack up your prices they go mm. to your neighbor so now you have to be very very tactful with your pricing meaning that you now have to rely a lot on turnover mm. 
Mm. And then you have to see what you can do about the price of your food and beverages, which is another thing that also took everybody by surprise this year. Yes. I mean, it's the price food of food inflation just kept. You know, was just skyrocketed. But then you can't skyrocket your prices the way the price of food skyrockets mm. because you have to understand your target market okay. and the fact that they are very price sensitive and that you have competition. So what are you going to do? You think of what other values am I going to add? Okay. What different? How am I going to make the guests really wowed? Okay. So what do I do that, differently? What do I do differently so that they will be willing to part with more money and I can stay afloat? Okay. So it's challenging, but we'll get there. Okay, now everyone is talking about the Omicron um, variant and indeed uh, the hoteliers are not um, left out now. What would you advise uh, to operators uh, so that uh, they don't actually get subsumed into all of this? So right now we don't even... Omicron is just, I don't think it's more than a week old. We don't even know much about so it. So we don't know much about it, about infection rates, about how severe it is. All that is still being watched right now. Mm. So the thing is, after Omicron, who knows, there may be another one. Mm. And another one. And another one. So it means that it's time for us to embrace change. Okay. It's upon us. So you either swim with it or become a dinosaur. So it's best we embrace technology, which is why I said, like, for my team, that's what we're working on next year, how we're going to expand and then make sure that our guests have this kind of experiences where yeah. we take a lot of our customer service online. So it's not that you're going to stack all your workers, yeah. but you train them more. Okay, so to so be that, techie. Exactly. And, you know. So that those orders that you're calling the, the, the receptionist by, by midnight, you can actually chat on the hotel app on your phone yes. and your orders are taken and delivered to you. Real time. Real time. All so. right. Okay. So let's uh, try and uh, round up on this um, discourse now. You know, for, on this show, we try as much as possible to give advice and insight to people who would actually want to get into this particular line. If you were to advise right now, you know, for someone who is thinking of uh, getting into the hotel business and that uh, they are wondering, should I invest? Uh, there's COVID. Uh, what if there was a lockdown? What would you say to them? What are the threats? What are the opportunities? Let's just uh, give some sort of advice so some people could learn one or two things. Your camera is just this one. Go straight up. All right. So I will say come on board. Mm. Because even in developed countries, it's happening, you know, a lot of all these tech-driven hotels are raising a whole lot of money mm. and giving a lot of assurances to their investors. Even Kayak, which is what used to be a booking site, is now basically trying to find their own solutions too. So everybody is going online. It's time we embrace it. And so I will tell them that there are a lot of opportunities. I mean, you can't all dwell, be pessimistic and say there's things are expensive, this is like expensive and everything. You have to find a way to make it work for you. And Nigeria has 200 million people. That's a lot of numbers to play with. Mm. So just throw so, the numbers and indeed uh, do your math. At the end of the day, you might be able to, you know, live above all exactly. the stuff. Exactly. And start small if you haven't done it before. So okay. you don't get overwhelmed. All start right. really small and then go right. from there. Well, Amar, we just have to say a big thank you to you for all the insight that you have, uh, you know, brought to the show today. And of course, uh, some people must have learned one or two things. We do appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, too. It's all been right. a pleasure. All right. And just before we go, here's a piece of um, cherry news for tenants in Lagos State. The government says it has set aside five billion naira to kickstart the state monthly tenancy scheme in January next year. Commissioner for Finance, Dr. Rabio Lo, announced this at the second Lagos Real Estate Marketplace Conference and Exhibitions on Wednesday. Uh, reporter Love Ikuku Oyedokun tells us more in this report. Thank you so much. Always... These are stakeholders of the real estate sector gathered here. They were prepared to find solutions to some salient issues affecting their practice. The real estate sector has remained a very profitable investment worldwide. In Lagos, the real estate sector has no doubt grown in leaps and bounds. Tokia Benson Awoyinka is a special advisor to Governor Sowonlu on housing. She disclosed that the state government is desirous of housing investment partnerships. There is need for us all to know government's policies put in place and how the knowledge of all these policies can assist us in making informed decisions in respect of our investments. As a government, we have realized this fact and as such have been making business-friendly policies that can assist would-be investors and investees who operate in a conducive business environment. 
making the real estate sector attractive to investors and provision of decent and affordable shelter on a sustainable basis for all Lagosians is one of the topmost things in the minds of Governor Babajide Sowonlu. The governor assured the investors of ensuring they no longer encounter land grabbers. Some of the things that we realize, which we're working on, is the issue around ownership of land. So there's so many land, right, that government has not put proper title on, which Omonile and other families member have, you know, um, 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 title on. One thing that was constantly chorused by panelists was regulation. The need to regulate the real estate market in Lagos is expedient. It's something that we must do. And so whether it is on the side of the supplier who's building, you know, regulation is key. The role of the regulator itself, is it a police or an enabler? My suggestion is that we should please ensure that this regulator is an enabler, not a police. The annual conference and exhibition is aimed at facilitating the process of attaining the objective, identifying and removing all the obstacles through pragmatic actions and innovative ideas. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Uyedoku for Plus TV, Africa. Indeed, it is some cherry news for Lagosians at COM 2022. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonio. Let's do it again next time. Bye for now.